Schomburg, the next block up from the Schomburg Library, around the corner. I used to go there all the time. County Cullen Library in New York, in Harlem. But across from Harlem Hospital, oh, right here. fine. Anyway, and his poem is called, uh, uh, well, it says Heritage by Car County Cullen. Here it goes. What is Africa to me? Copper sun or scarlet sea? Jungle star or jungle track? Strong bronze men? or regal black. Women from those loins I sprang when the birds of Eden sang. One three centuries removed from the scenes his fathers loved. Spice grove, cinnamon tree, what is Africa to me? Well, I'll let you go do, 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 do all the rest of that stuff. Remember, this is County Cullen, you know, part of the Harlem Renaissance. You know the Harlem Renaissance. Come on. Okay, let's do with just literary things. Let me look here. Let's deal with literary things. As you know, Harlem Renaissance, you know, you know the Anna Bontemps, you know, you know those people, you know, Langston Hughes, you know, Zora Neale Hurston. Did you know that Zora Neale Hurston and Langston Hughes were roommates one time in, in New Jersey? Where was, was that town in West, Westbury? They were in New Jersey, someplace in New Jersey, northern, well, central northern New Jersey. But I digress as usual. So that's one literary thing, you know, the whole horror renaissance. And, you know, it's just not just literature, but it's punctuated with a whole bunch of other things, you know. Uh, plays, poets, you know, the whole thing, okay. Um, but then, then, then another movement, another, um, and of, let me jump. Then you, everybody knows about the, the 60s, you know. Uh, Leroy Jones, a.k.a. Amir Baraka, you know. Uh, you know, the whole, the, the whole thing is with, uh, with my man, um, uh, Larry Neal, you know, Ray Wilson's Larry Neal. Larry Neal went and got Baraka from from the, from from, uh, from Ginsburg and the Beats and pulled pull him up to Harlem and you know the whole thing started. And anyway, so yeah, that's where my man Henry Dumas comes out of that whole thing. Okay, you know the '60s. Come on, Black Fire, blah blah blah. But there's another literary move between doing between this, and I'm not gonna go further than that because you know the next literary movement I am aware of. Was in basically the late '90s, you know, when you had a middle '90s, whatever, when you had a whole a whole explosion of these romance novels and the relationship things from from black people. So I'm talking about black literary movements right now, but let's leave that aside because too new. Okay, somebody else has to define that. But between the Harlem Renaissance and um, and uh, and the black, you know, uh, black black cultural movement, the black aesthetic, you know, the '60s. Uh, you had a thing, I believe, I believe it's even the greatest literary movement to me, uh, era, to me, to me, this is my personal thing, is the, is the 50s, basically the early 50s, right up until, right up until, you know, right after the McCarthy era. McCarthy really, you know, put a squash a lot of other these relationships. I mean, some extraordinary books came out then. Well, here's the thing, here's the thing I want to really uh, address. I read a book in the late 60s. Uh, it was just because I used to read a lot of novels. Uh, it's a, it wasn't that big novel, and it was, a, it was it was a white guy, and he was talking really about uh, it was a, it was a novel form, but it, it, it took place. It talked about it. I think it took place in the twenties or thirties, something like that. Whenever it took place, maybe it took place in the fifties, but he was tracing. No, he was it, was. it took place in the the current thing, the sixties, whatever have you. But they were talking about. The, he was talking about how um, the political system. Was uh, was already uh, put in place um, in the early 20s, and the whole thing about it was you wanted to uh, put in place uh, incompetent people, you know, like dummies. <laughs> you know, was your politician? Think about it. Think about it. I mean, in the United States, you, you, you sort of say, "Oh, people got to be." No, you can be anything and, and be a politician. Anybody can be a politician. You know, 
It's, it's like journalism. Nobody, anybody can be a journalist these days. A journalist these days. Everybody is a journalist. You know, it's like a gun owner. Everybody can be a gun owner. You know I mean, there's no, there's no test license. You have to, you have to be a, be a politician or, 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 or a journalist or, or a gun owner. It's all the same thing. Okay. But I digress. So anyway, so he and, and, and they was talking and they was talking about like basically if you put a bunch if the political system is 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 run by a bunch of idiots or people that can be manipulated or be bored or whatever have you, then basically you got it. So there was a whole whole book was about this whole this whole thing and how it was going on to, to today. Um, and I I, I, some, I have a, uh, one of my best friends. He's a he, well he he's a lawyer right? Well he was a lawyer. He's retired. I mean he's a lawyer right? And I used to be with him all the time. I would say stuff. He said, "Where'd you get that from?" Because you know, he lawyer, he wanted proof. I'm like, I don't know. I read it someplace. Blah blah blah. But in this day and age, with the internet, I probably could find that thing if I remember what the author's name was or whatever had it. But I can't. Okay, I bring all that up because a lot of things happen. Because remember, all these things like like uh, my favorite book, The Outsider. Remember, I told you about The Outsider. Oh, no, get that. Um, you know, Richard Pryor. Uh, a lot of a lot of people. You know, you hold uh, James Baldwin, of course. You have the whole. All those, all those cats. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of cats fighting, and and and, and women writing it. I mean, you know, uh, what, what's the street by? Um, oh man, what's the street by? I forgot the sister's name. Anyway, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of people that wrote in in basically basically the 50s, uh, and they were they were they were incredible books. If you really 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 read them, the, the the scope is, is is amazing, you know what I mean? And it all was contemporary things they did with the contemporary matters and blah 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 blah. blah. And to me, politically, that was the best period. Because remember the the, the um, Black Renaissance, I'm calling the Black well, the Harlem Renaissance. You know, that was about a cultural thing, and they were reflecting on certain things in Africa and worship and stuff. Then you had the sixties, went back to Africa, whatever happened, and they also reflected. I don't know, talk about the sixties now, reflect about revolution and things at the time, but it was sort of reactionary. The fifties was a whole other thing. It was re re reminiscent. It was kind of a strange thing, but I really liked that era uh, uh, the most. Right um, now, now coming to today, let me get to today. It's interesting to me because I don't think I'm, I'm sure great books are being written and, and, and novels, whatever, being written. And, have to be because you know everything steps on whatever on, uh, on on the next thing that came before you, one thing that came before you. Uh, but uh, but certain errors create certain things. I think the world is so whatever, you know, so many influences that uh, we can't get a clear focus anymore on what, what's going on. So you can be in anybody's camp, and there's a lot of camps to be in. And I think what's also happening in this day and age, camps. Or sniping and fighting each other's camps. In other words, we, it's, a, it's a global tribalism. You know what I mean? And the only people that are actually clear are, are again, the people that, that had that idea. But let's make idiots, you know, politicians and whatever they, whatever they came up with, and we, we sort of go along with that. So your whole news media, your your politicians, everybody, you know, they're 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 captive to to things that. That um, they haven't really thought about. Uh, there's no. Well, if they have thought about it, I don't know what they're thinking. You see. So I say that all the same. But there's new movements happening up all the time. But you have to. If you look at the movement, it has to be based on something, and it probably was a movement that was done before, which gets to our main point of the desk of the ADOS. This is a movement I have not seen. I have not seen. I mean, I can look at the Harlem Renaissance and connect it to the, to the early, the, the 50s, and connect it to, and, and connect it to um, uh, the, uh, um, black liberation uh, literature, but, um, the black cultural uh, movement of the 60s. Then so it's, it's, it's like a clear line. You, you can sort of get it. But ATOS is sort of really different. I mean, it's sort of based. It's not. Real, it's based on things, but it's not based on things. You see, like in this poem when when, when County Cullen. In fact, I met County Color's widow, but did I tell you I, met, I shook her hand? I met County Color's widow. And, well, he had long been gone. He had been gone since the late late forties. He died. Uh, but when he says, three, one, three centuries removed from the scenes of his father's love," County Color said he's he, he's three hundred years when he's writing this. He says he's, he's three hundred years removed from Africa. You see, so he's referencing, you know, that that kind of thing. But in that one thing, and I'm going like, ah, he's ADOS. Yes, he mentions Africa. He has a love for Africa, but he's ADOS. And that's what I think we have to get through our head. We have to be smart about this, right? We can be everything, especially, we can be everything, especially, 
ADOS. Now, I don't know if any of this made any sense to you. I came to my little punch thing about ADOS. But it's really, really very important that, um, uh, that people keep on, they keep on sniping with them, have let them do what they do. I, all kinds of misinformation out there. Either people don't read or they, they willfully don't want to. I don't know what's going on with, with, with folks over internet. But in this day and age with the internet, you hear books, you have internet, whatever have you, you can get the information. You don't have to just get a headline, you know, from some, some whatever have you, or even just listen to me wax on and blah, 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 and then come out here and say something. I mean, you need, you can actually find out facts. Which is again why ADOS is so important because it's based on what facts and data, facts and data, facts and data. Opinion doesn't matter. The the, the voices that that voices the, the these opinions don't matter. As long as those, uh, uh, what I'm saying, voices the opinion, well, they don't matter. But but the facts, the people that are espousing the facts and the data, those those people espouse it. It doesn't matter. We have to look at their facts and their data. You don't look at the person. Look behind the person. Okay. You have to look behind the person. That's the point. Where they're coming from. Okay? Now I can know, I won't get into Kelsey or whatever, I really like Kelsey Cope. Okay, so that's it. A little message from me, T from the past, has taken a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from a desk of the ADOS, American Descendants of Chattel Sleeper. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One more thing. I hear a lot of people saying American Descendants of Slaves. It's interesting because we're talking about slaves or individuals. We're talking about the slavery, the institution. So I've taken to keep on saying, even though the, um, American descendants of, of slavery doesn't really say chattel slavery, I'm taking to say chattel slavery because, uh, talk about a poem in, in, in County Gun, because it, with alliteration, remember, if you, American descendants of slaves, it's sort of, uh, uh, if you say American descendants of chattel slavery, as soon as you say chattel slavery, you, you don't say chattel slaves. It doesn't, you see, it doesn't trip off your tongue. It doesn't, eh? So when you say chattel slavery, that hits, and you will remember chattel slavery. It's a phrase unto itself. It's different than slaves. So I'd say chattel slavery only because I just want to be able to, to, to remember it's slavery to the institution, not slaves to the individual, because anybody can be a slave. But this slavery institution we had in the United States, that's ooh, totally different, 300 years on the counter club. So remember, so that's why I say chattel slavery, because it somehow it goes together. It's like one word, chattel slavery, rather than slaves, which is also one word. Okay, so just to make that clear. Okay, okay.